This is Anfisa from Retina Coach, and today I'm going to talk about gas injection techniques. Gas is usually injected at the end of the case after fluid air exchange and retinal flattening. When the eye is filled with air, a 30 to 60 milliliter syringe with diluted gas is used to replace air. In general, the idea is to inject gas from one port and vent air from the other. In this video, I will show you six techniques to do that. The first technique consists of removing all scleral cannulas and checking that there is no air leak. A scleral cannula with an infusion line is removed last to support eye pressure. After all sclerotomies are secured, gas is injected with a syringe connected to the 30 gauge needle through the pars plana from one side and air vented through a water filled syringe without a plunger connected to the 30 gauge needle from the other side. Water in the syringe is used to observe the speed and amount of air bubbles escaping the eye. The second technique consists of removing the scleral cannula with an infusion line, ensuring that there is no air leak, and after that, injecting gas through the superior scleral cannula from the one side and removing air by opening the valve of the scleral cannula from the other side. As you can see in this video, a flute needle can be used for this purpose. In the case of non-valve scleral cannulas, the plug can be opened, allowing air to escape the eye. After the gas lavage is completed, scleral cannulas are removed, sclerotomies are ensured not to leak, and eye pressure is evaluated by palpation. The third technique requires a three-way stopcock connected to the air infusion line. In this case, one superoscleral cannula is removed and sclerotomy is ensured not to leak. A syringe with gas is connected to the stopcock while it's open toward the infusion line of the vitrectomy system. The advantage of this technique is that eye pressure is maintained between manures. After the syringe with gas is connected, the stopcock should be opened toward it to allow gas passage to the eye. The remaining superoscleral cannula is used for air venting. The fourth technique is quite similar to the previous one, but does not require using a three-way stopcock. A syringe with gas is connected directly to the infusion line. To avoid deflation of the eye, switching to the syringe with gas should be fast. Closing the infusion line opening with a finger after its disconnection from the vitrectomy system can also help to prevent air leakage and hypotony between manures. The rest of the stages are the same. The gas is injected through the infusion line and air vented through the superior scleral cannula. The fifth technique consists of injecting gas through one of the superior cannulas and venting air through the infusion line connected to the vitrectomy system. Air infusion pressure should be decreased to lower values, for example, around 10 millimeters of mercury, allowing the pressure gradient during gas injection to push air from the eye through the infusion line. The sixth technique consists of leaving all three cannulas in place, setting air infusion pressure on 20 millimeters of mercury, and after that, injecting gas slowly from one port and venting through the other. The advantage of this technique is that the vitrectomy system controls the eye pressure during injection. The disadvantage is that simultaneous use of both the infusion line and venting cannula during a gas injection can cause unpredictable gas dilution inside the eye. Additional lavage with remaining gas at the end of the procedure after removing the cannula with an infusion line can solve this problem. In all methods mentioned in this video, important to inject gas slowly so air will have time to escape the eye and eye pressure will not rise significantly. To ensure that all sclerotomies do not leak, a cotton swab can be used to massage the sclerotomies to promote self-sealing, or if this doesn't help, sclerotomies can be sutured. To evaluate the eye pressure by palpation at the end of the procedure, and also to leave 5 to 10 milliliters of gas in the syringe so that if there is hypotony, 
Additional gas can be injected at the end of the case using a thought gauge needle. We invite you to visit our retinacoach.com website, subscribe to our channel to stay updated on all our latest videos, and also comment if you have any suggested topics for future videos. Thank you for your attention.